I'm Max Egan. I'm a mechanical engineering and MBA student at the University of Alabama, and I've been interning at Burns & McDonald, an engineering consulting firm based in Kansas City. I've always been fascinated by sustainable energy and have the awesome opportunity to experience renewable development here at Burns & Mac. My dad, who has been part of the manufacturing space for the past 25 years, has taught me everything he knows, and now's my chance to return the favor. So I invited him to explore the world of renewable energy and the people and places responsible for its future. This is Manufacturing Explorers. All right, here we are, Appleton, Wisconsin. This is like, for me, the best part of the journey because we're getting back sort of to the roots of manufacturing, sort of the discrete parts of manufacturing that I'm so familiar with. Wisconsin's a big deal for manufacturing. Like, I want to say like 19, 20% of the output of the state is manufacturing based. There's no way you didn't Google that fact. Yeah, maybe I did. <laughs> I'll also tell you that 16% of the workforce is in manufacturing, which is really important. And it's a yeah. growing part of the economy of Wisconsin. So I'm excited about that too. Hey, fun fact, Appleton, Wisconsin is the childhood home of whom? Harry Houdini. <laughs> <laughs> After my dad's Houdini trivia, we headed off to ASCO. ASCO is a Burns & Mac division that builds and connects the elements in a power facility. Have you ever wondered about all the things that lead up to the moment of turning on a light bulb? Well, almost everything that delivers electricity to your home was touched by a welding process. Everything from welded battery storage racks to welded windmill towers. And that's what we were headed to ASCO to see. The fabrication processes behind renewable energy. Hey, Patrick, it's nice to meet you. Max Egan. Patrick, how are you doing? Travis Egan. Nice to meet you guys. Welcome to ASCO and our fabrication facilities. I mean, hopefully we've got some cool stuff for you to see and maybe even participate in. If you guys are ready, let's go on in. Thanks for having us. ASCO does a lot of what is called code work, which is welding according to standards produced by the American Society of Mechanical Engineers and the American Welding Society. This work requires highly skilled welders, and that's something that there is a shortage of. In fact, according to AWS, there will be a deficit of 400,000 welders by 2024. To keep up with the growing demand for renewable energy, ASCO utilizes some semi-automatic and automated applications like submerged arc welding. So this is one of the, the more high quality, high deposit rate welding processes that we have. It's submerged arc welding, or sub arc for short. Ultimately what's happening is, is he's controlling the weld deposit um, and there's a flux that is going over the top right away. And he's, the weld bead that he's doing in this process is a lot bigger. Um, it's, it's depositing at a faster rate than if you were doing it manually and the quality is a lot greater as well. What is this piece for? So this piece is uh, for a natural gas uh, compression station. Okay. Uh, so it's going to have so its own set of weld processes. Uh, it's going to Michigan. Michigan has the DOT has its own requirements there that we have to follow. The client has their own requirements. It is a Burns and Mac family project. We have our own requirements. So we have to make sure we're maintaining uh, the traceability and everything that we're doing properly on this type of work. So I mean, this is automation. I mean. You've got a. We have the automated turntable that he's controlling as well, um, and we got the weld and filler metal being deposited automatically based on the settings that he put in there. Yeah. But for the most part, there's not a whole lot of automation in the process here. I mean, there's it's a lot of human interaction with each of the welds. Yeah, because we're more engineered to order and not productized. Yeah. It is going to be more manual involvement, but there is solutions out there that we're constantly looking for in our lean uh, exercises that we're going through. So Patrick, I think this is pretty cool. This is interesting. So you've got this massive piece here, right? Mm -hmm. And it goes on the end of this long pipe and it really is held on with just a few welds. And this has got to be like, how, how heavy do you think this is? It's probably around 800 pounds. So you take this 800 pound, what is the name of this? It is a race face weld neck flange. Okay, so the flange gets put onto the base with what? Maybe six or eight welds. Yeah, six to eight tack welds. And it, pretty much what they're using as well is some consumer. I don't know if you see that. There's yeah. some rod in there to help bridge tack that together. But this is just temporary and it's plenty of weld to support uh, the weight of this plan. Okay. 
And then would this go through that machine that we had seen before, or would this be? So when the, when the welder gets something like this, what they're gonna do is they're gonna put their root pass in, and then once they get to that point, they're gonna cut that out, and okay. then they're gonna continue and then repeat, repeat until they're all the way around. So it kind of seals the whole thing up. Correct. Wow, that's cool. Is there any chance we could get uh, him to get his hands dirty a little bit and try something out here? Yeah, absolutely. That. Let's see what we can find out for you. This thing is like Darth Vader's mask or something. Once I hook the air on, you're gonna take this and flip it forward. Okay. That's gonna be your trigger. Okay. Okay? And what I want you to do is I just want you to you don't have to apply a lot of pressure. All you're gonna do is just go back and forth right here, take the paint off. All right, so hey, what do you think? He's got a few turn grinding? Uh, I think he's gonna be a little slow. Check it out, take a look. Let's get here. Look at this part. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. You didn't put any gouges in it. I think that's pretty good. You have to work on your speed. Hey, I'll that. take I'll take pretty good. Eventually you'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> While I obviously don't have a future in grinding, doing something hands-on like this made me realize that we take our electricity for granted. We tend to think of power generation in silos, but we really need to understand that everything is part of an ecosystem. You can't have power generation without manufacturing and welding, and vice versa. The unknown work being done in facilities like this helped to greatly shape the world we live in. So this part of the facility is our metal fab uh, production service. Uh, in this shop we do pretty much everything outside of piping, so it's going to be structural steel, platforms, miscellaneous metals, um, and sheet metal. Uh, so it's, it's more of a job shop setup. And what we're getting into a lot lately is in the renewables and how we can assist uh, Burns and Mac and some of our construction projects with it. So we've been able to prototype things, we've been able to um, help create concepts on, on new equipment to help make those projects more successful, and we've been fabricating a lot of the structural steel for the substations that a lot of that power goes to eventually. Okay. So let me take you around and show you some of the things that we've been doing. Um, this is actually something that we're, uh, we fabricated six of for our construction arm of our company. And what it's used to do is to offload solar panels. Um, the projects that we have coming up in Wisconsin this year, starting this year, there's going to be 2,000 containers worth of solar panels on, uh, on that project. And we wanted an efficient way to unload them from the containers and this will ramp up to there. You'll be able to take forklifts on, in and out and then also stage uh, solar panels as needed. So this is something custom you guys built specifically to take the panels off the truck? Correct. So it is, uh, there's other products that you can rent and you can use and we've done on different projects, but we took some best practices with that and actually worked with our structural engineers and the energy group to actually come up with a better version of what we used in the past and certified that it has the right amount of steel and what we need to get the job done. I mean, engineering is all about solving problems and it's cool to see how you guys are using your skill set and the technologies it's to like, more yeah, and, and to create your own products that you know for your own jobs, yep. like this, like this ramp. That's really cool. So appreciate your time yep. today. Really enjoyed it. You are super knowledgeable on this uh, this whole facility and everything going on with it. So we really appreciate. It. Thank you. Learned a lot today. My pleasure. Thanks really for coming. Thank you. When she want, when she need. So this has been a really incredible experience for me, right? Getting to travel and see all these different aspects of the company. Um, but today I, I had this realization and one thing that makes Burns McDonald and Asco's you know, relationships so, so cool is the ways in which they're able to innovate to support each other. Sure. Um, it, it gives Burns McDonald a really good advantage. I think you're really lucky to have had this experience. I mean, you're in the headquarters with the engineers and it's heavy engineering. You're, you're, you're solving problems, you're, you're creating the products and services. 
and then you get to go out in the field and I don't know, I don't know that all the interns get such an experience to go out and really see this stuff and see the manufacturing, which to me is the coolest part, right? So this has been great, yeah. but there's a lot more to see and do. So let's go on to our uh, next uh, adventure. All right, let's do it. All right, buddy, let's go. Mm -hmm.